Okay, today I'm going to do OpenSUSE Linux Upgrade for Dummies, and first I'm going to just start the procedure, get it going, and then if you want to hear me ramble on, you can hang on, stick around, and listen, and uh, also, you could also see it finish. I may split it into a part two because, uh, you know, command line terminal results aren't really all that exciting to watch for an hour. Okay, so, without, without, due res uh, without any further ado, what I'm going to do is first is let you know what I'm in. Right now I'm in OpenSUSE 11.3 64-bit, but um, I will say that I'm in 11.3 64-bit, but I will say that this will probably work pretty much identically in OpenSUSE 11. 332-bit. First thing I want to do before I um, uh, it's stu it's a two-step process to get um, OpenSUSE to upgrade to the next version. You know, it isn't as drop drop dead easy or simple as, as Ubuntu. Ubuntu's got it down to pretty much one button hiccup, and so. Um, you gotta find the button, and you push it, and then you walk away, come back an hour later, and you're upgraded. OpenSUSE is a little more complicated, but not really that much. It's enough for anybody to, to be able to handle. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Yast. I'm just gonna make sure I'm actually getting this on camera. And I'm gonna supply my root password on camera for the world to see not. Okay, so here I am. Now, <coughs> I'm going to go into software repositories. Now, all of these are configured for, um, of course, OpenSUSE 11.3 64-bit. So I'm going to want to change the parameters in all these for 11.4. That just came out maybe a couple weeks ago. Maybe late April or May, and by the way, I should say, today, the date today is May 21st, 2011. So, uh, the reason why I do that is because sometimes, over time, things change, you know, people upgrade, you get another version, you know, just so you know what I am. We got a Intel, Intel Core i7, so you get an idea of the speed, you know, you can adjust all these uh, factors to your expectations. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit these. So here's the ATI repository. Now, <coughs> four, I say OK. Then it's going to go through this procedure and start downloading new stuff. There's contrib. On any of these that I notice, if I notice it doesn't go, gives me an error message. Besides just doing this, that means the syntax of the repository is changed. You can't just change the number from three to four. Um, you have to, you know, find out where the repository actually is, maybe in a slightly differently named directory, et cetera, et cetera. Factory. Now that is just factory. Factory. What factory is is for everything. Okay. And then Mozilla. And I have to contemplate, I have to really think about whether I want to have the factory repository activated. I activated that so I can get WebGL working. At least that's what worked for me when I you know, did a presentation on that here. Um, and I think if I have factory enabled, uh, I may do something to this upgrade. So I'm going to, I don't want to upgrade to factory, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable that. Okay, then there's the Pac-Man repository. Pac-Man usually has a lot of apps that are, don't come with the base SUSE you know, installation that comes with SUSE, but they're apps that you want. VLC comes to mind. Um, go figure. It's doing something. It's checking repository license, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, Video Land. Now why would I need both Video Land and Pac-Man? I don't know. Pac-Man may have some of the multimedia. 
Okay, so get through this and line. I get a lot of repositories here. You know, you, you probably don't have as many. You probably only have <coughs> with the stock installation of OpenSUSE. You probably only have the last five that are listed there. Okay, so here is the Mozilla repository. And since this has to do with factory, again, I'm going to disable it for now. Mozilla Alpha, why do I think that's going to be factory? Yes, it is. Ooh. I didn't change anything, though. So disable those by checking off the enabled and automatically refresh. So in all these ones that I've disabled, I've unchecked those two. For ATI, I'm going to wait until after I'm upgraded. The reason being, um, it can be problematic to get proprietary drivers installed. Um, I'm thinking that perhaps uh, the ATI drivers that I already have installed in this, in you know, this installation might even carry forward to the next um, version of OpenSUSE. I don't want to mess with them right now. Hopefully during the upgrade, it's not going to take out the ATI drivers and put the open source ones. But that will be an opportunity for me to present how I did it, although all the knowledge comes from the open source of lizards, so I actually did it. Um, that's where I got the information from. Here's Java. And all these repositories, if you search open source Linux and repositories in Google, you'll find at the opensource.org uh, website two or three different web pages with repositories listed. There's the regular repositories that actually just come with the installation. You don't really need to do anything to get those to work, and those are the ones I'm going to edit right now. The ones you will probably want to find are the ones with the Pac-Man, the Java, Wine, maybe Mozilla if you want to try out the latest Mozilla before it's released. Those repositories, you want to find that page and then add the different uh, web locations to the repository list. You notice the syntax of it, just, just to let you know. Um, this I can make this name anything I want up here. But basically, if you choose HTTP as the protocol, notice you don't have the HTTP colon backslash, backslash before download OpenSUSE.org. And, and then once you get past just the basic domain name, then uh, the, the directory and the server is everything else. So if I were to put HTTP download opensuse.org slash debug distribution 11.3 repo OSS in a web browser, I'd see a bunch of packages there, uh, RPM packages that are, that are available. But this is the way it gets broken down on in YAST. It's a little bit confusing because it doesn't really <laughs> make it absolutely clear. Okay, so the change I'm going to make here again is just a four. Four. Say okay. And it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna bring in the new license. It's gonna add the new repository, the new package list, etc., etc., etc. Here's the non-open source software. These are the ones that come stock with OpenSUSE. Open source software, which is called OSS there. Now once you get to whatever repository that was, because I wasn't paying attention, it says, oh, here's the license agreement for OpenSUSE 4. Basically, changing that repository is basically what they, I guess they consider the triggering event that you're attempting to install OpenSUSE level 4. So I just accept the agreements uh, no matter what they say. Okay, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's safe to agree with. At least for now. I 
I've always liked Sousa. I'm not, again, I'm not too overly thrilled with the look and feel of KD4, although this, at least I have icons on my desktop, and at least I think I'll be able to, um, update. That's where you get your security updates from. Okay, so I'm done with this part. I've disabled all the dangerous repositories and kept the standard ones in there plus the extra ones. And now I'm go to the next step. And that step is, as you can see, you got a little foreshadowing up there. It's a zipper dupe. So I'm going to dupe. I'm going to always trust OpenSUSE's keys. Again, this isn't just a one-click install. Ubuntu is still up on this. Now, I, I don't see why it couldn't be. Why well, Yas couldn't have a um, version upgrade button in there. But you still have to change, you know, the way they have the repositories set up, you still have to change where you're getting your software from. The repositories are the place on the internet where your software comes from. So basically what I've, I've said is I want to get my software now from the OpenSUSE 11.4 server, not the OpenSUSE 11.3 server. So now it's going to build the repository. And a lot of this is just going to be text. Eventually it's going to get done with this part and then it's going to say, do you want to install this software? And I'm going to say yes. And that's going to have a little command line res results and downloading you know, whatever you know, library apps, installing, downloading, installing, and that'll go on for about an hour. And then once the hour is up, um, I will basically you just have to reboot and I'm done. Now on mine I have a sp in my desk I have a special situation that I'm controlling my boot the bootloader from my fe <laughs> uh, Fedora partition that I rarely ever go into and, and I don't have any plans to update. It's Fedora I think it's I don't know, it's the one thirteen three I think. I mean, I have to upgrade to Fedora fourteen one. I wasn't very thrilled with it, but I'm just happy that I have regular grub over there, and I go over on the command lines over there. Um, I guess I'll stop now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a short second issue presentation while this is going on, uh, on how to save your data from floppy disks, um, using some pretty good tools and an older version of SUSE. It'll probably work in a newer version of SUSE. But that's just the, the situation I've set up. So I'm going to stop now and I'm going to go to my next subject.